Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the scope of the Grignard reaction. So I'm going to present the different kinds of uh, carbonyl electrophiles that Grignard reagents can react with. Uh, in the previous video, which talked about, or in a previous video talking about the synthesis of, synthesis of the Grignard reagents themselves, I talked about the different kinds of things that can be made into Grignard reagents. And so when you consider uh, that you can use almost any you know, halo carbon and many types of carbonyl electrophiles, the Grignard reaction has a really powerful opportunity to create a humongous number of possible combinations of things. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start with the simplest of all carbonyl electrophiles, and that's formaldehyde. And formaldehyde, if you don't know, is uh, the more common name, and almost everybody uses it for uh, ethanol, or I'm sorry, methanol, the simplest aldehyde. Mm, and then I'm going to try in this these, this video to use specific Grignard reagents, uh, so just get you used to seeing specific combinations of things. Uh, and so if you take this Grignard reagent, and here I have my cyclopentyl Grignard reagent, uh, my proton source under the arrow. There you go. <clears throat> Cyclopentyl Grignard reagent, formaldehyde, and then the the other bonus in this video is I want to include in when I'm presenting some mechanism arrows if I can get them to behave. Here, let's drag this up here a little bit uh, to at least show them and to remind you of some of the, the steps along the way. So if we have formaldehyde, formaldehyde reacts with any Grignard reagent to essentially add one carbon and make a primary alcohol off, off of that position. And then when we do the proton transfer step, and we add water for the aqueous workup, Here's my two H3O plus. Oops. There we go. That gives us the alcohol. So this is a great way to make a primary alcohol, to extend a chain one carbon. Uh, and really honestly, the, the only limitations on what kinds of primary alcohols can be made this way are in the variations, and there are numerous, of what you can react or what you can make a Grignard reagent out of. Uh, second entry here are going to be all of the other aldehydes. It's now, uh, you know, let's, let's use propyl, maybe propyl magnesium chloride as our Grignard reagent. My, I want my one label here, um, and then no, let's use you know maybe maybe the four carbon uh, aldehyde butanol. Here we're gonna draw an arrow. As I said I was going to draw a bunch of arrows in this video, and so the Grignard reagent reacts with uh, the aldehyde. You get nucleophilic attack at that carbonyl carbon. Carbon oxygen double bond breaks, etc. We generate the alkoxide anion, and now so we have three carbons. We're adding four carbons: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Alkoxide anion here. Oops, not not another no. Oxide anion there, and we do the aqueous workup, and get the corresponding alcohol. Oh, look, I, I made something symmetric. I was not actually planning planning that. Right. Ooh. And then I want to list over here that this is a recipe, Grignard reagents plus uh, aldehyde, other aldehydes is a recipe for secondary alcohols. And again, you know, I happen to pick a Grignard reagent and an aldehyde that made a symmetric secondary alcohol, but really you can have anything in your Grignard reagent and almost anything in your aldehyde and you can have a wide range of structures in your secondary alcohol. Next on is to ketones. We've had 
two hydrogens on the other side of the carbonyl group, uh, hydrogen and a and, a, and an alkyl group. Now we're going to move on to ketones. So we're going to make a ketone. We're going to react it with ketones. So I'm going to use uh, the Grignard reagent made from bromobenzene, so phenyl magnesium bromide. And I'm going to do a ketone. We're going to use, uh, I'll do two butanone. React it with carbonyl, put our carbonyl electrophile. Oxygen, my alkoxide anion, and then following aqueous workup, we now have a tertiary alcohol. So a reaction between a, uh, oops, a ketone and a Grignard reagent after aqueous workup gives us a tertiary a tertiary alcohol. And notice. Uh, that this tertiary alcohol has three different hydrocarbon groups at that alcohol carbon. And so depending on the choices we make, you can really quickly build much comp more complicated structures with all kinds of different substitutions uh, using a Grignard reagent. Esters. Things get interesting. Uh, Grignard reagents are powerful enough to react with esters. Let's... Um, mm, now let's make like allyl magnesium iodide. I don't know. I'm going to pick a simple ester here because I'm going to end up drawing more mechanism steps and I want to give myself some room. So let's just have it react methyl, methyl acetate. So Grignard reagent attacks the ester carbonyl group. Uh, this is once again very much like we are used to seeing. Uh, generating an alkoxide anion. Um, if you've watched my video about lithium aluminum hydride, then you already know that under certain circumstances, I don't want to let the arrows to move too, you can get a loss of leaving group when you have some nucleophiles attacking an ester, and the that alkoxide or alkoxy group can leave as a leaving group. And now you have a ketone. And so my, my Grignard reagent reacts with that ketone again. Um, and I'm not going to end up, end up drawing those arrows, but it, but I do appear to be accidentally filling the screen with them. I'm not going to, I'm not going to draw the, the, the mechanism arrows again. It's exactly the same as it was for the other ketone. But after aqueous workup. Now you have a tertiary alcohol coming from an ester. And two of the hydrocarbon groups on that tertiary alcohol are the same. So an ester is a really interesting uh, carbonyl electrophile. If you want to make a tertiary alcohol that's a little bit more symmetric, you can use an ester as your electrophile because you will get two Substituents there at that car at that alcohol carbon are the same, essentially two equivalents of the Grignard reagent reacting. There's some other carboxylic acid derivatives that behave the same as the ester, uh, and their reactions are usually discussed in the uh, in the context of those compounds and not in the context of the synthesis of alcohols. Um, I just wanted to show, I think a couple of more examples. Uh, one is epoxides. This isn't a carbonyl group, but um, epoxides react with, you know, epoxides react with Grignard reagents to, to form various alcohols depending on the structure of the epoxide. And so if you have an epoxide um, and I'm going to add a chirality center and some other substituents here. Um, Grignard reagents will react with the epoxide at the less substituted position, you know, depending on, on 
what you have talked about in organic chemistry, they probably haven't covered uh, a lot of reactions of epoxides yet, uh, but Grignard reagents react with epoxides at the less substituted position. And this ring opening reaction actually has a lot in common with um, the uh, with the SN2. Well, it is an SN2 reaction actually. So there's some stereochemical preservation that's going on here. I want to make sure that I, I get the, the, the correct stereochemical arrangement. Yep, that's it. You'll, you'll pardon me for being paranoid. Uh, I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do it really quickly on the fly, and even I'm not that good all of the time. Oops. And so you can get. Uh, alcohols now, but you've added multiple additional carbon atoms, and the alcohol, right? So here, the Grignard reagent. I'm going to draw a box around what, what what used to be the Grignard reagent. The alcohol is now no longer on the neighboring carbon, but one carbon over. So epoxides present a really interesting option for the synthesis of uh, alcohols as well. Uh, it's worth noting that, that other electrophiles will react uh, and generate other kinds of products as well. And uh, there will be, for me, additional videos coming out uh, talking about some of those reactions down the line. In the last video in this sequence, we're going to talk about the applications of the Grignard reaction in the synthesis of organic molecules. Thank you for watching.